Today on AMC Movie Talk, John and the panel will discuss Ant-Man getting an official release date, Kick-Ass 2 details, Ghostbusters 3 going into production, and a whole bunch more. So sit tight. AMC Movie Talk starts right now. Welcome to AMC Movie Talk. Movie talk for movie fans. This is episode number 21, originally recorded on Thursday, October the 18th, 2012, at the beautiful AMC Burbank 16 in Burbank, California. The dream of arrested development. Thanks a lot for joining us, folks. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Green salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. As always, I'm your host. My name is John Campia. Joining me, first of all, sitting to my immediate right, she is the uh, associate editor of movie news around here at AMC Theater. She's Miss Roth Cornette. Roth. Hello. And also joining us, a regular around here, Miss Amy Rose Eisenbach. Amy Rose, thanks for being here. What up? Sitting back there at the table. You, of course, recognize her, Ms. Candon Jackson. Good to be back. Good to have you here, too. And uh, we are going to start off uh, this week's episode of AMC Movie Talk the way we start off every episode, by getting you caught up to date on everything going on in the world of movie news with your news flash. The official synopsis for the upcoming Kick-Ass 2 Balls to the Wall has been released and sounds amazing. Basically, the film follows our hero Kick-Ass, who is on his own when Mindy, who is Hit-Girl, is caught by her adopted father sneaking out as Hit-Girl one night and is forbidden from rejoining the fight against crime. Kick-Ass joins up with a new hero team called Justice Forever, led by the born-again ex-mobster named Colonel Stars and Stripes. However, just when they start to clean up the streets, Red Mist forms a new team of villains to take on the heroes. Oh, and Red Mist has given himself a new a new name. <laughs> the Mother Effer. Only it's not Effer. <laughs> we can't say what his full name is here on the show. The Mother Effer. Kick-Ass 2 Balls to the Wall is set to hit AMC theaters everywhere this upcoming summer. Cannot wait. Christoph Waltz, who you will know from Inglorious Bastards and the upcoming Django Unchained, has been cast as the Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev and director Mike Newell's, Newell's Reykjavik. Say that ten times fast. The film's producer Ridley Scott describes the project thusly. The film will offer the viewer a unique look into the two larger-than-life figures who served as the catalyst for one of the most defining moments in our history, the end of the Cold War. Waltz joins Michael Douglas, who will portray President Ronald Reagan in the film that follows Reagan's sojourn to Iceland in October 1986 to meet with Gorbachev for Cold War peace talks. Can we all agree that this needs a new title? (laughs) <laughs> yes, one that perhaps everybody can enunciate. Or new reader. It's been made official. Ant-Man will be the next Marvel superhero to join the ranks of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Disney has announced that Henry Pym and his superhero alter ego will hit the big screen on November 6th, 2015 and will be the first Marvel film following The Avengers 2. As expected, the film will be directed by Shaun of the Dead and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World director Edgar Wright. No word yet on casting for the film, but we'll keep you up to date as more details emerge. Remember that horror film, The Woman in Black? So yes. bad. <laughs> starring, I, I, didn't didn't think, I thought bad. it had some scary moments. Yeah. In any event, it was starring my beloved Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe. Well, it looks like it's going to get a sequel. The new film will be called The Woman in Black, Angel of Death. Damn. The, yes. The film will pick up 40 years after the events of the first, as a group of evacuated children are set up to temporarily live in the house from the original and awaken its darkest inhabitant. No official word if Radcliffe will somehow return to reprise his role. It is possible if you've seen the film, but the term highly doubtful does come to so mind. So he'll be like 60? No, he's... No, I can't give a can't spoiler. I can't give a spoiler. I can't give a spoiler. I want to know. I can't give a spoiler. <laughs> Warner Brothers has just won a major victory regarding the rights to Superman. WB has was taken to court by Jean Pevy, who is the sister of Superman co-creator Joe Schuster. Good Canadian kid. As a, uh, as a termination notice on the copyright to the to the uh, to the character Superman, Judge Otis D. Wright ruled that an agreement made in 1992 by PV negotiated. Uh, uh, negotiate with Warner Brothers basically took away her right to issue a termination notice. The referenced 2000 or 1992 deal with WB, PV released DC and Warner Brothers from any further requirements to use the Superman character and thus is disqualified from issuing the termination notice on the copyright license. However, that doesn't mean WB is free and clear forever. They still have to deal with the estate of the other Superman co-creator, who in 2008 won a court case that retained their right to issue a Terminator. Terminator. I want to keep on like, saying Terminator. What? Terminator. Termination notice right on the lease. We will keep you updated as this develops. 
I love that story. So Warner Brothers, speaking of, has made slight alterations to both the title and release date of Brian Singer's upcoming fantasy adventure based on the Jack and the Beanstalk story. You probably know Singer from such films as The Usual Sucks the Best, the, the, the X-Men 1 and 2, Valkyrie, and Superman Returns. The title was Jack the Giant Killer and has now been changed to Jack the Giant Slayer. The movie also moved release dates and it will arrive in 2D, 3D, and IMAX 3D theaters, AMC theaters if you will, on March 1st, 2013 instead of the previously announced March 22nd. Starring Nicholas Hout, Stanley Tucci, Ian McShane, Bill Nighy, Eleanor Tomlinson, and Ewan McGregor, the film tells the story of an ancient war that is reignited when a young farmhand unwittingly opens a gateway between our world and a fearsome race of giants. Unleashed on the earth for the first time in centuries, the giants strive to reclaim the land they once lost, forcing young Jack into the battle of his life to stop them. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> More Ghostbusters Woo. 3 news. Please note my dripping sarcasm. Uh, Deadline is now reporting that Ivan Reitman is indeed returning to direct Ghostbusters 3, and the film will go into production in the summer of 2013 with a target release date of sometime in 2014 to coincide with the 30th anniversary of the original film. No, there's still no Bill Murray. He will pass on the new film. Dan Aykroyd reaffirmed that the movie will focus on the old Ghostbusters guard handing the reins over to the next generation, but will still feature most of the original cast aside from Murray, who seems to be the only one smart enough to avoid getting involved in this project. <laughs> True that. Although the film hasn't even officially opened, it does this weekend, it, there are plans already firmly in place to bring us an Alex Cross sequel, which will be titled Double Cross. Double Cross! Uh, I'm gonna... We're going to pull that out. Wow. It's called Double Cross, people. Have a twin? <laughs> Reports claim that both author James <laughs> Patterson and Tyler Perry are close to signing the deal to greenlight the sequel. Tyler Perry declined the option to direct the upcoming Alex Cross, but there is no word yet that he may decide to direct Double Cross. Alex Cross opens nationwide in AMC theaters this weekend. And that will do it for your news flash. Uh, hey folks, before we get into uh, some more details and discussion on some of these news topics, I want to remind you that before doing anything else, right now, you'll see a button pop up on the screen right now. You need to subscribe to our AMC Theaters YouTube channel. It'll keep you up to date on all the movie news that's going on, our editorials, and of course, the weekly AMC Movie Talk Show. So take a minute, click on the subscribe button. If you're watching us on one of your mobile devices, make sure you go to our AMC YouTube page and click subscribe. Get hooked up and always be in the loop on what's going on with us. Hey, and listen, if you'd like to listen to an audio-only version of this show, say you're driving in your car, you'd like to listen to the show and to the movie discussion, check the description of this video and in the post, if you're watching this on our website, for a link to the audio-only version of this episode, as well as a link to subscribe in iTunes to the audio-only version so you can get it updated automatically every week. Hey, I want to mention one other thing. Uh, you may remember last week that Roth is pretty excited about this new film that's that opened in AMC theaters last week called Seven Psychopaths. Yes, she likes. She it. just loves the Shih Tzu. I <laughs> I love the Shih Tzu out of that dog. It's amazing. It, no, I'm I'm really serious. This movie is is really good. Everyone ought to see it. And guess how you can see it. Well, we actually have a AMC Theaters. We love this movie so much. We want to make sure you have every opportunity. And we want to entice you to get out to see this film. So here's what we're doing. This Saturday, we are offering a deal where buy one ticket to Seven Psychopaths, get a second ticket free. So that means two of you That's can go yes. for the price of one. We are going to put up details later today on AMC's, uh, our movie news site, which is at amctheaters.com slash movie hyphen news. You can get all the details there. It'll also be up on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash amctheaters. And we'll put out a tweet about it as well. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash amctheaters. I want to say something legit. I, this is, <laughs> I'm serious. This, we'll is see. this is something that I love about I'll this the company. Judge of that. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Um, this is something I love about this company is that it really supports, I'm being serious, supports um, independent film. Not that this is necessarily an independent film, but it is a film that other it people... dances between the You know, two, it dances right? the line, and it's a film that people may otherwise not see. It will be, I swear, one of the most unique, bizarre, insane, funny, ridiculous, violent, well-acted, and well-written films that you will see this year. If you want to see it and a friend is on the fence, take them for free. So there you go. Once again, check out uh, all of our various channels for all the details on how you can take advantage of this two-for-one deal uh, on our AMC channels. All right, let's get into it here. Topic number one. 
We've known for some time that Marvel wanted to get an Ant-Man project on the go. We know for, we've known for some time that amazing director Edgar Wright uh, was attached if such a project came to fruition. They showed some test footage at Comic-Con. <laughs> But uh, as, as Roth actually pointed out on AMC uh, earlier this week, it's, it's kind of been feeling like Marvel has been feeling it out, seeing what audience reaction was going to be before really 100% committing to it. Well, that's all done now. It's, it's official. Ant-Man is coming. It's going to be directed by Edgar Wright, as expected. And it's going to be the first Marvel film to come out after Avengers Part 2. A lot of reaction online yeah. I'm seeing about this. Um, Roth, give me your first um, impressions about this when you hear that Ant-Man's a go. I was really surprised. And I, I think I'm more surprised than I have a right to be in a way because Edgar Wright's certainly been dancing around this for several years, which I knew. And maybe that's why I think that sometimes when someone's talking about something for X, Ghostbusters 2, we'll talk about that later. When somebody's been talking three. about something, three, pardon me, um, for such X amount of time and it doesn't happen, you're just like, it's not going to happen. This is just that thing that Edgar Wright likes to talk about. But then when they had the test footage at Com Con, I thought, okay, Marvel's really seeing if their fan base at least will show up for this, you know, because Comic Con's sort of the perfect place to see if at least their core fan base yeah. will show up. If you don't even have your core fan base, you really have nothing when you're making an Ant Man movie. And this may be a brilliant script, and this may be, and I love Edgar Wright. But I am really surprised because he doesn't seem to fit into the visual and tonal aesthetic that they have devised that has created kind of a cohesive universe in as much as the films are all unique. They're really a cohesive universe, the Marvel films. And Edgar Wright is his own thing. And Ant-Man is bananas. You know what I mean? Like the character's out of control. It's a guy that can shrink himself and control ants with a helmet. Yeah, know? he doesn't do it for us. Like, so here's an interesting question, Candon. As as the one one of the people here who's not, you're not. I think it's fair to say you're not a comic book junkie. No, but I have learned quite a lot. <laughs> but so my question is: as somebody who's not like a full blown comic book junkie, mm-hmm. how much do you know about Ant Man? Well. To be honest, I just Googled Ant-Man like while you guys were talking, and he looks ridiculous. <laughs> like, he's flying on an ant. That just See, and is weird. That <laughs> raises a great point. One of the reasons I find Ant-Man such an interesting, and I'm going to use the term interesting right now, an interesting choice is because... It's kind. Look, most people who are not um, comic book junkies know who Thor is. You mm-hmm. may not know all the mythology of Thor and everything goes up, but you know who Thor is. You know who Iron Man mm-hmm. is. You, everybody Captain knows America, who Captain blah, blah, America yeah, is. Hulk. Everybody knows who the Incredible Hulk is. Granted, not as many people know who Black Widow is or something, but, but they were, for the most part, they were the secondary guys do. characters. <laughs> so now, and man, now you're getting into, her. this is going to be the first movie they do where it's just a character that nobody really knows. Amy Rose... Good idea, bad idea. What do you see in this decision? I've never, re- you know, I've never. He's never really done it for me. I don't, you know. There's other science, you know, scientists turned discovery into cool things that I like. I mean, the lizard. I like him. He's much cooler to me than Ant Man. I just, whatever, you know. I will still see it because I'm a devoted Marvel junkie. So that's that, and I do like right, but like, eh. So there's a picture kind of lackluster to me, to be honest. There's a picture of Ant Man going up the Hulk's nose. Yeah, <laughs> that I will watch. And Just ants really are annoying weird. as hell. So I, I mean, I, I think it'll be interesting because they're gonna eh. do Guardians of the Galaxy uh-huh. first, which is, which was the other one that's like, yes, yeah, like, this is like nobody's heard of Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Yeah, Rocket more Raccoon. than Ant Man, and yeah. also it's got crazy characters. You know, I mean, like a raccoon. It's a talking <laughs> raccoon. Rocket Raccoon. Rocket and raccoon. I disagree. With you. I, I, I know. Ant Man a lot better than I think. You know my uh, you? you know my sister has heard of Ant Man, never heard of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, so that's an interesting uh, choice. I also think it's kind of interesting that this is where a lot of the debate is coming in online between people. Is okay. It's time to introduce a new character in. Okay. Well, they've already got Guardians of the Galaxy, but all right, a new individual sure. character. 
Here's the question a lot of people are asking. If you're going to bring in a new character, why not Black Panther? Yeah, that has been a huge question. Why not Black Panther? And I know that there are, there are, there's kind of equal camps that have been wanting to see a Black Panther movie for a long time. And it is a good question. I think that is a valid question. Because it's a very interesting you know, mythology to Black Panther. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's a really... And I can think of five actors off the top of my... I'm sure there's a lot of actors that would love to play that character. I can think five off the top of my head that I think would be great, you know? It is an interesting question. I, Why? I was standing speaking with Idris Elba yeah, and asked I him that question. I love Idris Elba. And the, the first thing he said He's was, so cool. Black Panther. Black Panther, exactly. And he said, I, I want pl- I would, I'd love, love to play Black and Panther. And how so. great would he be? Ant-Man yeah. and obviously Wasp is going to be in it too. It will, I don't know. I mean, and I think, this is what I think. I think, I think that Ant-Man moved forward instead of another character simply because of Edgar Wright. Because Edgar Wright has been right working on the script. He's been shooting test footage. He's been pushing it forward. He's been the person championing, championing it for X amount of time. And I think that they finally, <clears throat> with whatever the response was at Comic-Con and so forth, decided to go ahead and take the risk. They were going to take a risk with Guardians of the Galaxy. And hey, listen, I know that we all are like, everyone knows who Iron Man is now. But at the time, I think there were a lot of people that were going, Iron Man, wow. Because that was before they had really started to dig in to the larger universe. And they were using the characters that we were all already pretty familiar with, you know. And so this may be amazing. Ant-Man may end up being one of our favorite characters brought to And you're right, is amazing. So I think it has a chance. Yeah. But, but I think, I, I understand why people are upset about Black Panther. But I don't, I think it's not Marvel being um, kind of, I, I don't think that was... A forethought. I think that it was the fact that Edgar Wright already had the package all together for Ant-Man. Yeah. Well, and there's another thing. To, here's an interesting thing that I, I haven't read anybody talking about. To me, this is the most fascinating thing. We're all talking about Marvel Phase 2 now. Now that right. the Avengers exactly. are done, we are now in Phase 2. This is the first. Now, we heard Kevy, Kevin Feige earlier say that, yeah, we've got some thoughts on Phase 3. This is the first definitive proof to us yeah. that they are already in their planning stages exactly. for phase three. Ant-Man is going to be the first thing for phase three. Here's my theory about why we're getting Ant-Man instead of Black Panther. Pardon me. I think Black Panther makes a much more interesting standalone movie. When you look at the mythology and the... Like, much more interesting. Like, v- extremely interesting. But, and I've got nothing to back this up with. <laughs> this is just me using my sheer brilliance to share with you all. Um... I, I don't believe they were ever planning, and I still don't believe that they were planning to first introduce us to Henry Pym, Ant-Man, in Ant-Man. I believe we were going to see Ant-Man, Henry Pym in Avengers 2, if not before. I, I'm Probably not before, but I believe we're going to see Ant-Man in Avengers 2 that will then lead into his film. Now, and as much as I said that Black Panther makes a much more interesting standalone movie, I think launching a character into Avengers makes a lot more sense for an Ant-Man than it does for Black Panther. So if they were just starting the new character yeah. with their own standalone movie, I'd say absolutely go with Black Panther. If you're going to introduce the new character in with the Avengers 2, which once again, there's nothing out official that says that's happening, mm-hmm. I'm just always right, and I'm telling you that's what's going to happen, um, that I think it makes much more sense for Ant-Man to be, to be introduced in with the Avengers and then get his own movie. And let's make no mistake about it. We're going to see Black Panther eventually. Yes. Eventually, I'm. You know what? I have. I would be surprised if he, if Black Panther, isn't in Marvel's Phase Three plans already. I mean, I, I just want to say I feel like your greatest virtue, John, is your modesty. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I, just, I got a Sunday it's school. It's a Canadian thing. I got a Sunday school uh, prize pin for humility, but then they took it away from me because I wore it. <laughs> anyway, that was a God. joke, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Camden. Um, Thank you, Camden. Yeah, yes. I, I, I think unless everything falls apart and then suddenly people stop in the next two or three years going to see comic book movies, not gonna happen. That you will see Black Panther eventually. But it is kind of an interesting question. But why do you think that Ant Man's better to introduce into the Avengers than uh, Black Panther? Because, because I think there is. With Black Panther, one of the things that makes him such a great character and makes him such a better candidate for introducing in his own film is that backstory. Mm-hmm. With Henry Pym, you don't need a lot of setup with Henry Pym no. slash Ant-Man. Yeah, you kind of get what he's all about. One one scene of dialogue where with Nick Fury explaining who Ant-Man is, 
With Black Panther, you're not doing that character justice without the full backstory, where he comes from, the, his, his, the culture that he's coming from, the stuff with Which his dad. Which is the stuff that I love. Yes. You're not doing him justice by just introducing him in with another thing. With Henry Pym slash Ant-Man, Kinda you can throw, throw him there. right into the game, explain his backstory as you go, and it makes sense and it fits. Whereas with back Black Panther, once again, I don't think you're doing the and character justice. And you have justice. the female okay. protagonist front and center right there, which they always love. So yes. That makes sense. All right, let's move on to uh, this next item. Uh, you know what? I probably talk more about kick-ass on this show than I should because I, I probably care more about <laughs> no this film than such I No I love it, too. But I'm telling you, once again... If you haven't seen the original Kick-Ass, it is See such it. a treasure. It really is a treat. It, it was so pleasantly surprising yeah. to me. Yeah, sleeper hit. And I've been dying for Kick-Ass 2. was so excited earlier this year when we heard that it was officially coming. So excited hearing Jim Carrey was coming on to play mm-hmm. Colonel Stars and Stripes. Awesome. Um, Rumors about Big Daddy. Resurrection. Rumors about Big Daddy, which uh, here's the thing. I'm a little bit nervous now about the Big Daddy stuff because... The synopsis comes out. There's no even hint yeah. of Big Daddy. But then again, why, why would, would they? they? Nicholas Cage da- was so good. Oh, why, Daddy? Bring him Please back. bring him back. Yeah, but why? Usually I'm not into the whole resurrection thing, but with him and like he Hit never Girl. died. Yeah. <laughs> there was never a body True. in a coffin. That, I mean, I mean there's there's a lot of, there's craziness that was, going that was down. a lot to survive, though. I mean, he yeah. was, they killed him pretty good. You yeah, know? but did you? But did that's you, his training. Did you see Lawless? Yeah, True. I did see that. That was a lot to but survive too. That's I'm true. true. <laughs> but yeah, Hit Girl um, and Big Daddy together is that, like the best duo. And you know, I guess Lawless was based on that was a real guy too. Yeah, that was based on a true that story, a real guy. Tom That's Hardy true. was so good. Yeah, it's it's the best I've ever seen him. So I, and that good. includes, I mean, that includes everything I've yeah. seen him in, I, including Bronson, including yeah. Dark Knight. I think that's the best I've ever seen him. That be, not the best movie he's ever yeah, been in, but, but I think role. his best performance. I, there's so many things to like about the synopsis for Kick-Ass 2. First, let's start with the names. Okay. <laughs> First and foremost, Head and mother Shoulders. Mother Effer. The Mother Effer. <laughs> the Mother Effer. Come on. That's so good. That's amazing. Can't you see, just see McLovin saying, yes, my yes. name is yes, I can. The Mother, mother Effer. Effer. He was hilarious as Red Mist, yeah. I thought. He, he was, was great, great as yeah. Red Mist. And he's, he's great. Got, he's, he's, I don't you guys have, everybody's interviewed him, yes? Yeah. And he's so, he's got such a lovely, sweet. He's exactly um, what you think he's going to be. And he's rare. not because, it, because he, plays, be he plays, he plays this sort of brat harsh horrible little brat very well right well but red he's mist, a soft red mist had his vulnerable side and he's justifiably he red mist he had did. a conscious he, he did have a conscious to do yeah. the right thing yes. until papa until you mess with his papa his dad yeah. died now he's full blown baddie i got to tell the story quickly um a couple of years ago at comic con um, i i I've, I've thrown a party at comic con the last couple of years and uh, christopher mins plaz was one of our guests and we were actually giving him an amc film fanatics award that night and he showed up just a little bit late to the party, just a little bit late. And his, gotta make publicist, an his publicist got out of the car, but he didn't. Because I was downstairs by the front door waiting for him to make sure he can get in, no problem. And his publicist comes up to me and he says, uh, uh, Christopher just got a phone call about 15 minutes ago. His grandfather just died. Aww. And I'm like, what? I'm like, tell him to go. Tell him to get out of here. He doesn't need to be here. He said, no. He said, he's really been looking forward to this. He says he's made a commitment to this and he wants to follow wow. through. I'm like, for a kid that yeah. young, and he's, not, he's not like a child. No, right? but he's still To have young that actor. type of one professionalism yeah. to integrity to say, you know what? I Class. made a commitment to this. I'm doing this. So he and I went into the party. We sat down in, uh, I had like a little uh, private cabana thing. And I said, look, seriously, like, I'm so glad you're here, but you can go. Like, you don't. Need to say, and you could tell he was so upset. Aww. And you, you could tell that I, I don't know his relationship with the grandfather. But you can just tell that he loved his grandfather. I mean, he was so upset. He's like, "No, man, I, I'm really honored that you guys were doing this for me, and I made a commitment. I want to do this. I wow. really do." I'm like, "All right, but at any moment you want to leave, just leave." And he said, "Sure, no problem." And he went through with the night, and he was great and uh, impressed me to know. Yeah. He made a fan. I was already a fan, but he made a fan out of me for life. Yeah. The way he conducted himself, you know? It's just, because who would have blamed him if he said, no, I can't do this, I gotta leave. Him. Nobody would have blamed Very him. Very classy and professional. But um, he's the mother effer. He yeah, he's the mother effer. And I think the great <laughs> thing, too, about Kick-Ass is that, I mean, look, comic books 
have the same tropes, basically. Yeah. You know, it's like the two best friends and one's really wealthy and then the dad dies via the hands of the hero and he becomes the villain. But what Kick-Ass manages to do is take the exact same story ideas and refresh it, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And it does it purposefully. It uses it, those, those totally stereotypes purposely. on purpose. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. turns the, it t- yeah, exactly. It's taking the tropes and it's turning them on themselves and exploring this idea of a hero and a villain. And so what I hope to see with the mother effer <laughs> and I'm gonna mess up at some point. At and some actually, point, we're, I'm we gonna actually to bleep. say we it. may have to make yeah. a bleep here. Rich. We might slip. I, I mean, I'm hoping to see that he still retains some of that kind of other aspects of his personality. I you feel know? like he will, especially with a name like that. Like it's just gonna happen. The yeah. mother effort. Like I just when we first hear it on screen, the delivery of it. I mean, it's gonna be awesome. I yeah. keep doing this because that just feels really natural with the mother effort. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and Hit Girl is back. Hit Girl is awesome. So I love her. Excited, and you know. Know that the, in the synopsis read, okay, she gets busted by trying to sneak out uh-huh. as a girl, which means we're going to see her near in the beginning. And as who's hit her girl. stepdad? Uh, it's it's uh, his partner. It's Nick yeah. uh, Nicholas Cage's oh, partner. Yes, yes, Remember, yes, yes, he yes. ends up adopting her at the yes, end. Yes, I forgot. And so she gets busted. But you know when uh, Justice Forever gets in trouble with this new League Justice of Evil Forever. with the Mother Effer, mm-hmm. that <laughs> Hit Girl will reemerge. Well, but here's the thing: is like they have She's a so similar cool. vendetta. You know what I mean? Yes. Hit Girl has the vendetta about Big Daddy, and the but Mother her, Effer her has, vendetta's been sol- has been resolved. It's been resolved, yeah. sure, but. That leaves wounds, John. Yeah. And she was already quite. She was raised an assassin. That's in her <laughs> blood. To suck That's it up and get is. over it. That's who she is. Uh, She's but I, I'm I'm so excited. This whole thing about him, uh, Kickass joining up with Justice Forever, the superhero team, the Born Again Gangster, Colonel yeah. Stars and Stripes, played by Jim. Jim Carrey. Carrey's gonna kill that role. I, he really will. And I'm not one of these. I'm not a, a Jim Carrey fanboy uh, to the point where I go, oh yeah, put Jim Carrey in anything, he'd be great. This, this is, is a perfect. great role for him. Did you yes. like him as the Riddler? Speaking of comic book kind of things. Okay. He but missed for me. I in think that. <sighs> the problem was he wasn't the problem. The problem was the entire The entire film yeah. was the yeah. problem. It was the a problem. Entire, okay, let me ask. Okay, because we're all really excited about Kick Ass 2, Balls to Wall, obviously. <laughs> as we should be and as you should be. Do you have any concerns at all that Matthew Vaughn is not directing? Um, no. And I, I don't think either. initially I was at first, but... Here's, we talk about this all the time, uh, not only on air, but off air. We talk about this all the time. One of the most translucent, flexible, pliable terms in all of Hollywood is producer. When somebody says they're a producer on a film, that means nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It Just a name mean, at times. It could mean they're involved with every detail on the day-to-day operations. It could mean that they signed one check once yep. or got one guy involved. Yeah, I, I know this actor. I can help you get him involved, but I get a producer credit. So it could mean nothing. When I really read about how heavily involved Matthew Vaughn is with this in terms of getting the script ready and the story and and hand selecting the director, then I went, okay, I feel safe Mm -hmm. with this. I I do feel safe with this. And uh, because even before it gets to the director's chair, Matthew Vaughn's hands are all over this. So I feel good about it. Yeah. Uh, Would I prefer to see actually Matthew Vaughn back directing? Absolutely. It's a no brainer. But I feel pretty good about it. I feel like Same. the only thing is this, is that if the movie isn't as good as the first one was and isn't as good as we all want it to be, we know exactly who's going to get the blame for that. Yeah. So he Always. is, you know, it's a it's a bit of a risk on his part. But it'll be interesting. I don't have huge concerns, but I, I do either. wish it was Matthew All Bob. excitement. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to the next topic. Talking about movies that I can't wait to see. <laughs> Ghostbusters 3 news comes out. Again, I'm dripping with sarcasm. Uh, no. Look, and let me let me preface everything I'm going to say with this. Like everybody else in the world, I loved the original Ghostbusters. Loved it. Still do. I, I still will stop the clicking when I come to it on, and it's being broadcast on TV somewhere. I'll stop and watch. Stop the clicking. <laughs> stop the clicking. Um, was not a big fan of Ghostbusters 2. I think some people are... The nostalgia of the first Ghostbusters, I think, Carried colors. Over. Yeah, I think it's 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 distorting some people's. It wasn't um, embarrassing, but, but it wasn't. Excuse good. Yeah. me, the Stay Puff Marshmallow. Oh, I mean, that's on the first one. You're talking about Ghostbusters yeah. too. Okay. I think Hollywood is addicted I, to sequels. Well, well, there's a good reason sequels, for that, prequels. right? I mean, because sequels. But some of them just triple prequel don't need it. Like it's like I feel like it's a new thing. Like this whole this newer generation of movies. I uh, feel like it's just like ex- uh, like sequel explosion. Everything deserves a sequel, and it's just not true. Well, it all depends. I mean, even before it's released, are, 
There are films like, like for instance, like Alex Cross. They're always talking Alex yeah. Cross too. There yes, are films that, um, obviously, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You can't do that in one film. Obviously, right. The Godfather. The Godfather Two is one of the greatest Ever. films of all time. Mm -hmm. um, then you look at films. And some sequels are just blatantly horrible. But then you get some sequels like they happen. The first Star Trek movie, mm -hmm. the Star Trek the Motion Picture, is a horrible movie. <laughs> it's a awful. bad movie. Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. Pretty awesome. Thank God yeah. they made that movie. That movie is all-time classic sci-fi awesome. movie. Yeah. Um, but they, that already had a whole history. Right. Yeah. Had yeah. A whole franchise like and canon. Yeah. I thought the first Rush Hour was, was a yeah. mediocre to poor film. I thought film. it was funny. But I thought Rush Hour 2... It was better. Was I inexplicably funny. Yeah, and, and it was really funny. I enjoyed it. I was thoroughly entertained by it. Or sometimes you wait till the fifth one if it's fast five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's fast. yeah, it took and them then it gets five good. films to get it right. <laughs> it took them five I mean, films to course correct. That brings it back to your male crush, though. Whenever The Rock is in a film, you're in. I'm so. in. I'm in. But, well, I've seen Rock in some bad movies. <laughs> I'm a Paul still Walker fan. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I, Just I, his who? aesthetics, yeah, right? Exactly. Not his acting ability. Exactly. Good. <laughs> totally. He's, he's a handsome Walker. gentleman. He's a handsome gentleman. Yeah. Yes, but he's but a I bad actor. One of my arguments that I always have with people um, is is this. And the point I love to bring up is this. is like, are we seeing an exponential growth in the number of sequels and franchises? Um, the answer to that is obviously yes, we yes. are. However, we are also seeing an exponential growth over the past 15 years of how many films in general are getting made. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, I, I pulled up this number once, I think it was 1992, the number of studio produced, wide release, what other films was something like 300 and something, whatever, right? Go back to two years ago, the number was around 900. Wow. So there was a lot more film being made, mm -hmm. a lot more stories being told, and I think really, if you do the math, the number of sequels and franchise films being made in rel you know in proportion to the ones that aren't sequels are right. They're probably Ratio roughly wise. the same ratio wise. Yeah. But, um, but that being said, I can understand a return to Ghostbusters because of the nostalgia of it. Ghostbusters was a huge like pop culture phenomenon. It's awesome. mm -hmm. Yeah. Like who are you gonna call? Ghost I mean everybody knows that. We all Not know the Bill song. Murray. We're Not all Bill humming, Murray. Yeah. But here's where two problems come involved here. Only One, two? This is the two main ones. <laughs> the number one is, it's too late. No, let me go with three problems here. Number one, <laughs> it's too late. This is something that should have been done 10 years ago. And I mean that. 30th 10, anniversary, come on. I, no, I'm, I agree with you. It's yeah. too late. Should have been 10 years ago. I but will you still have, see it? Well, let me get to that. <laughs> I always get, this This is also a movie that they have been trying to get moving forever for 10 years. Yeah. Exactly. And when you have a movie that's this much problem, my second big problem is this. If I want to get involved with the Ghostbusters 3 because of nostalgia's sake, then I want Ghostbusters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't I want Bill some Murray. new generation led by Seth Rogen. Not that I, ha I love Seth Rogen. Don't get me wrong. But Seth Rogen is not a Ghostbuster. No, tonight. he's not. The it's going to be Ashton Kutcher. It's yeah, probably it's always Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. Kutcher. It's always Ashton. <laughs> and then the third thing is, it's not Ghostbusters if Bill Murray's not there. No, yeah, true. Agreed. Not like, even close. Ghostbusters is bigger than just one guy. Absolutely. But props but to him for turning do it, it down. <laughs> and so, but now, it's not like he needs it. He doesn't. But good yeah. for but him. Now, let me like, say this. I am saying all this stuff, all the problems I have, and why I am not looking forward to Ghostbusters three. But keep in mind, I am also the same guy who was not looking forward to the original Iron Man. I, for six months, said Iron Man is a stupid character. He's a poor man's Batman. Ugh. He's just another rich billionaire who has no superpowers, uses his money to build, to make toys, and uses those toys to fight crime, blah, blah, blah. He's just a poor man's Batman. I said that a lot for the year leading up to the original Iron Man. I loved the original <laughs> Iron Man. And so keep that in mind. So am I going to go see Ghostbusters yeah. 3? Yes, I will, because I'm going to give it a shot. Does it have the potential to really shock and surprise me the way the original, uh, the way Iron Man did? Absolutely Hopefully. it does. It absolutely could, could blow us away. I'm just saying that these are my concerns. Yeah, I'm not that I, excited I about know. it either. I, I mean, yeah. like I, I, Does it really? Because the thing is, Iron Man didn't have another Iron Man film. It had the comics but it didn't have another Iron Man film yeah. that it to was live being up to, to live exactly. up to Ghostbusters has Ghostbusters to live up yeah. to and you're right I mean the thing is the problem for me is this 
it's been talked about ad nauseum yeah. for years. Oh, and it's years just and like, it's just one of those things that, yeah, like I think I said this on a previous podcast that it's like crazy, crazy, crazy Uncle Dan's talking about Ghostbusters 3 again. <laughs> Uncle Dan, be quiet. Go sit in your recliner. And I love Uncle Dan. I love Uncle I Dan, love too. Dan I love Dan Aykroyd. But it was, it's one of those things where you start to feel like this person is really trying to cash in on something that was done for him yeah. a long time ago. And it's the person that still has a career, once no, which is yeah. Bill Murray, wants nothing to do with it, which makes the project seem like it's inherently flawed. You know what I mean? Because if the person who had the career and didn't have to say yes said yes, you would think, oh, this must be a good script. He and you wouldn't yes. blame him for the nostalgia you know. factor and wanting to get in there well, either. Well, except but that like, I will, and I know you don't like this film, but Blues Brothers, the Blues Brothers that he, no, yeah, I don't want to discuss. No. I, I don't, don't want to nope. discuss it. I don't dislike the Blues Brothers. I, it wasn't amazing, but, but it wasn't when he came back to that, either. it was him trying to resurrect a character, and it didn't work. And for it me. didn't work at all. Yeah. First of all, the other half of that team was. Gone. had passed away yeah so i feel like ghostbusters ha ghostbusters 3 has so much working against it yeah it cannot recapture that charm and that ingenuity because we know what it is we've seen it yeah so what are you going to bring to the table besides ashton kutcher that's new <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah and i don't want to see new go i just i don't want to see no new i'm not that excited about it either. i don't want to it's i would Man, I can't believe you're going to say this. I would almost be more enthusiastic at this point just hearing they were rebooting Ghostbusters. Really? Than, That's bold. Than this. Because yeah. rebooting it makes some sense. It's an old film. Could really use the update, the upgraded technology today. But to it's not necessary. Uh, well, necessary doesn't come into no, the No, not the in reboots. Um, and... I think that would have made more sense. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, let's move on from that. We're going to get to the mailbag in just a second here. But before we do get to our mailbag, uh, I want to remind you guys that, as we mentioned in the uh, newsflash, the new film Alex Cross opens this weekend in AMC theaters nationwide everywhere. You can get out and see it. And one of the real pleasant surprises of this film Alex Cross was the villain played by Matthew Fox, who just physically looks unbelievable long way from it's, lost it's, it's huh? a long way from lost <laughs> and he, he he plays a great villain uh roth actually last week i, I you had a chance him. to go and sit down and talk with matthew fox about alex cross and we want to share that conversation with you right now check it out so i'm sure everybody's been talking to you about the physical transformation that you go through in this yeah. what was that like for you as an actor and then what do you think it sort of gives the character to have that body type uh well, you know, I just always saw the guy that way. I mean, I really felt that um, he needed to look like that. I, I didn't really, I didn't really buy buy him if he didn't look like that. Honestly, I mean, I think that you know, the minute in my mind, I kind of see the movie through the script, and I see this introduction of this character that we don't really know who he is, and then he enters this um, this MMA ring, and suddenly we realize just that that his his body needed to represent that he's sort of there has to be a sense of of um, you know, ominous foreboding. We haven't really seen him do anything radical yet, but we have to sort of see it represented in the way he carries himself. And I felt that he was he he he, he would be he would burn on an on a level of energy that his body would just like sort of be eating away at itself all the time. So that's just the idea that I had for it, and um, I felt that it would be um, really challenging to try to try to do that. I'd never done anything like that before. I wasn't sure that I could do it. And uh, so that was part of the process for me. Do you feel like it was reflective of kind of his interest in discipline or his interest in pain or both? Self-inflicted pain and pain to others? Yeah, I mean, I, I do think he's a pretty masochistic guy and uh, he, he is interested in sort of uh, extreme sacrifice and discipline and control and um, doesn't tolerate any um, iota of weakness in himself and um, so yeah I mean I think that you know that Picasso would never eat for enjoyment he would never go sit down in a restaurant and and have a nice meal and a glass of wine I mean that's just not uh, unless he was um, trying to put on a face for someone he would never do that I mean the concept of eating for him would be purely uh, fueling a system and um, 
so yeah, I felt like it all it all worked for me in in the way that I was trying to put it all together. I talked to Tyler Perry, and he said that he had kept up with some of the Krav Maga training, and he felt like that really imp impacted his own life. And do you feel like the MMA training for you is that something that you've kept up with? Certainly not the abusive, non eating. I hope. No, no, I, I've been eating uh, <laughs> back to a normal uh, situation. The day I finished the movie, I started eating things that I'd really missed and, and uh, started enjoying those. And no, I haven't been doing um, any MMA stuff since, since the film. Uh, I can't say enough about how, how much help I got in that from Rory Markham, uh, MMA fighter, just a super individual. And we had uh, like three weeks to work together, um, training and him sort of preparing me and starting to choreograph the sequence. And um, it's been... Uh, no, the, the, once I once I left the film and was finished with my work there, uh, I very much sort of went back to a normal normal uh, pace of, of eating and exercise. We were just talking about great cinema villains earlier. Where do you think that Picasso kind of fits in in that? Is he a Hannibal Lecter type? He's not a serial killer. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I I didn't want to. Um, have I mean for me personally when I was trying to put it all together I didn't think too much about any references other than the the blueprint that I'd been given with the script and I wanted my process of sort of trying to create this guy to be um, unconstrained by any kind of borders or cons uh, or rules and so I just went down the road of trying to uh, to figure him out the, the best I could and make sense of it all and um, I really didn't um, have any, have any have any reference to the other 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 things? Okay, great. Really quickly, what do you think that your fans are going to love about watching you make this transition, and Alex Cross fans are going to love about this movie? Um, I I have no idea what people will take away from <laughs> it. You know, again, I just try to be involved in stories that I think are really interesting, and the roles um, that I've been asked to play within them are things that are challenging to me and offer new challenges, and so. Um, I hope that the film, um, I hope that all the Alex Cross fans out there, and I know there's a ton of them from the books, I hope that they appreciate this, this reboot, this update of, uh, of, of this character within this film. I think Rob Cohen's the most amazing guy, and I think that the film is, um, which I haven't seen yet, uh, I think is, I'm, I'm hearing, really, really uh, kinetic and, and hard-hitting, and I hope they appreciate it, and I hope that a any fans that I might bring in that, um, uh, that were Lost fans or whatever, that um, that they just uh, enjoy the film and, and it's up to them what they take away from it. So once again, Alex Cross opens in AMC Theaters everywhere this weekend. You can get your tickets for Alex Cross right now by going to amctheaters.com. You can get, also get tickets for Paranormal Activity 4, the aforementioned Seven Psychopaths. And you should. Lots of Argo. different films. Any, oh, Argo, Argo, which is my early Oscar favorite. But anyway, go on in there. You can get your <laughs> tickets for just about anything. Now, every week we like to take questions from the mailbag. You guys can email us anytime at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Then every week we pull out a couple of them from, uh, from the emails that you guys send us and read those on air and Canon has a bunch of them out back there so Canon, what do we got in the mailbag we got some good ones today um first one is from Patty she says hey John and the panel I love the show please start doing it daily even if it's oh, shorter oh wow so we've been commissioned working on, it. <laughs> working on it with Arrested Development getting new life on Netflix what are the chances that we'll see the Bluth Bluth Bluth. Yeah. Bluth. Oh, yeah. Is the Bluth. Right? Oh, yeah. Bluth family on the big screen. In it's their happening. Own it's happening. Movie. It's definitely happening. Yeah. It's, it's already not going good. to happen. Never in a million years. Oh, years. it's happening. My God. It is happening. It's happening. No. It is so happening. Not it true. is happening. It is definitely happening. I will kill you. Okay, well, well, not well, even I will kill you. I want to tell you. Don't, don't put that in the unit. It's, it's not going to happen. There's no. Okay. Never in a million years. The Arrested Development series has been talked about for years and years and years about picking up in a movie and all this. But it's actually. That's happening. Yes. And it's going to be awesome. And I think. I think it wasn't appreciated in its time. Well, when it, was it, on. Was, it was appreciating. Awesome. It was appreciated by the people that watched it, and it's got a it's, small it's group got of people. A cult fall. It, well, it wasn't the ratings weren't that bad. Even they weren't the amazing. They weren't or it would have stayed good. on the air. They were not. Well, that's a whole other argument about how quickly <laughs> networks. I mean, the problem right now is that con there's so much content on uh, available everywhere, and that networks are very rapid to to cancel but shows. Not many Rapidly, comedies but, this good. But Arrested Development. Development, to be fair, had three seasons. It's getting the new life on Netflix, thank God, because it was massive genius hilarity. Amazing. And if you guys, if the you guys, whole ensemble is amazing. If you guys haven't seen it, you 
Pardon me. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. You should, if you've seen it the first time, watch it again because it you're going to see how brilliant it is. They will set up jokes and then pay them off six episodes or even a year later. It's incredible. With the, I'm, I'm talking about the hand people and you'll know what I mean if you've seen it. Um, <laughs> That's why you always leave a and, note. And I will say this. Yes, it is. It's funny that this comes up because it's similar to these other things, right? Where it's like we've been hearing about Arrested Development for years. For years. Um, you know. Michael Sarah doesn't want to jump back on because he's too big because that's the role he plays throughout every movie. He's well, <laughs> I, I think it's more complicated why he didn't want to jump back on as George Michael. But he's George Michael in every um, film he does. <laughs> but however, I really honestly believe that that it's going to be an odd synchronicity to see the fact that it can come back to life online in an online platform mm -hmm. will actually propel the movie forward. I will make that bet with you that if it I does too. well as well as I think it can do. It's going to the big screen. On Netflix, it will, there will be an Arrested Development it movie. Is. I have the faith, John. I do too. And I will not hear your doubt. Right. Here it is. It here is it healed. Is. Okay. Uh, now it's that, happening. now that the you. blind optimism is out of the way, <laughs> let's get a couple things out of the way here first. Number one, let's Arrested, get the pessimism. Arrested Development is a brilliant show. Brilliant. If you have not seen it, I echo everything all in Roth there. has just said. It's funny. It's well thought out. Now, the the one of the critis fair criticisms about the film has been that it is it was a very difficult show to jump in on halfway through. Yes. Uh, it, granted, but yes, you can still love but, it. But it's on. It's online. You can get the DVDs. You can whatever. You can start from the beginning. It is well worth the investment, and it's not that big of an investment because three it only seasons. had like three seasons. It, it's it's a great show and a show that is deserving. And I would jump up and down with excitement for if they were to announce that they were making a feature film. Good, because they will. But be. now the realist is here. No. And I'm going to tell you that it's never going to happen <laughs> ever. And here's why. Debbie Downer. First of all, I'm going to give you. Wah, I'm going to give you one word. Firefly. Firefly was an insanely popular <laughs> show with those that watch it. It had an extremely passionate following. It was an excellent show, much like Arrested Development. It was great. It didn't have the ratings to continue on. Unlike Arrested Development, it only lasted one season. Arrested yeah. Development went three. But like it, it didn't have the ratings to continue on. It got canceled. And then th this groundswell of support for the show. People that wanted more, wanted more Firefly, wanted more Firefly. Okay, Universal Pictures finally bravely stood up and said, we are going to give you more Firefly. And then came one of the, I think, one of the most underappreciated science fiction films of the past 10 years, Serenity, that nobody went to see. I've Nobody. I've seen Serenity. Yeah, and I we're about it. <laughs> the movie is awesome, and it, it bombed at the box office. It lost tons of money because the reality is this. People want to think that it makes good business sense to make a feature film because the original material we're talking about, whether it's a book or a comic book or a television show or whatever, was excellent. Makes no difference business-wise. The hard numbers are this. Arrested Development did not have enough followers to keep that show on air. They didn't. They also did make an effort to bring it back to network television before they made their deal with Netflix, and no networks would bite. So now they're going to Netflix, which is already taking the mass audience. Now, while Netflix is growing a lot, and I'm more aware of the online presence of things than anybody else, but it's still a smaller audience than what you're going to do but then by putting New Girl up on ABC. Uh -huh. Or Fox, forgive me. Um, so the basic reality is this. They are simply not the numbers. And there is precedent for movie studios to look at and say, this does not make business sense. It just doesn't. There's precedence for this. It, this does not work. And I just do not see a Fox. I do not see Universal. Should I do not see right anybody now? else stepping up Rob. and say, yes, we'll put up $40 million for this. It's I not will make happen. a very quick counter argument. And, and here's, <laughs> here it is. Um, I worked briefly in distribution. And um, the theatrical arm of the company that I worked for, because I worked in the broadcast distribution end of documentary films, right? They would sometimes take a documentary. And this is on a much smaller scale, obviously. Um, sometimes take a documentary and release it in theaters 
basically as advertisement for the DVD sales. Yes. And so yes. one option is is that if an Arrested Development movie could live on the way the Arrested Development TV show has lived on. Now the problem is now we have pirating and all these other things and so there's so much more of a loss for independent films and films that are planning to live on and have their life in DVD sales than there used to be mm -hmm. because there's so much pirating online, you know. But if they think that it can have a life um, you know, sort of in down, whether it's DVDs or downloads or whatever, and depending on how much it costs to make the movie, and the big question for how much it costs to make an Arrested Development movie is how much is the talent going to demand? And if they're yep. demanding astronomical amounts of money to make this movie, yeah, it's not going to happen. But if they come on as sort of a passion project and take a lower rate, it's possible that we could see a smaller release. They still would have to put in $25 million for marketing. They'd still have to put... Depending on how big the release is. Yeah, depending I, on how big the release is. I, I, I Look, the, the approach that you suggest, I think, makes sense, but I don't think it's one they'd ever really consider. The idea of I cause, hope cause, they because do. The, the distributor that wanted to buy my film, they they suggested the same thing. We put it in a limited theatrical release so it can promote. Right, this home is video a different sales. world. But yeah, this is a different level. Exactly, it is. It is. Um, but I'm. I like the possible. idea. I like the idea, but I don't think that's a direction they would go. Although I I wish they would listen to you. Um, they're gonna listen. Yeah, off. like I said, it's, it's happening. Just, <laughs> listen to listen. me. But you know what? Here's the thing, though. But here's here's the ultimate thing. If you really a fan of Arrested Development, as, as I am, We're as everybody not. at this we table hate, is, as everyone at this <laughs> table is. Um, here's the thing: uh, an Arrested Development feature film, a one ninety minute episode. That look, it's never going to happen. But even if it were, <sighs> aren't you more happy as an Arrested Development fan to get ten episodes? I want both. On I want all you know? of it. Yes. Just shower Give me, more. me I want the blues. in blues. They're all ba so I want to bathe in the Bluth family. And Henry Winkler as the lawyer? <laughs> Come on. Me? So all right. Good. So you look, you're just making arguments to me about why it would be great. I agree. We're look, optimistic. Look, if it's it happening. Gets, if it ever does come to pass, if it ever does come to pass, we are all in agreement that we'll be thrilled. I'll be really happy if they make it. And I'll be one of the first in line. And you'll buy us a Just costume. behind exactly. you guys. Exactly. <laughs> and you'll buy us a <laughs> But I'm just telling you, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Anyway, we, but and they disagree with me for, for the reasons they've mentioned. It's because we have, believe in the secret. <laughs> the secret. <laughs> positive <laughs> thoughts. Yes. Positive. All right, Candon, what else do we got? Let's talk about James Bond. Let's yes. do that. Uh, this is from Jay, and I love talking about Daniel Craig and James Bond because I, and I've I probably said this before, but I saw Daniel Craig on Broadway. I think he's incredible. Oh, um, he yeah. Don't ever look him directly in the eyes because, no, you because will never he be might able to look melt. away. Yeah. <laughs> melt. They are the most magnetic blue pools <laughs> any human being has ever possessed. Continue. Sorry. You're probably Rachel you Weiss gets to look in those eyes all the time. <laughs> Um, Jay says, while still a little while down the road, it seems likely that at some point Daniel Craig will call it a day on his time as James Bond. Wah, wah, wah. Do you have any thoughts on how the studio will or should approach the continuation of the franchise? After the largely positive reception of Casino Royale, would they try rebooting the franchise again by going back to the origin of Bond? Will, or will they just experiment with tone style with a new lead actor or even maintain that of the one established in the Craig era. Sony has said um, basically that they want Daniel Craig to keep playing Bond as long as he'll play Bond. So he, just, he signed on for for three, three more, more films recently. after yeah, after, yeah, after Skyfall, Skyfall. He signed on for three more. But it is an interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't think you reboot Bond again. No, I no. think you do what Bond has traditionally done. Yeah, just have each. I mean, remember most Bond films now. Or most Bond films in history have been kind of their own standalone films, even right. if they've exactly. had the same guy. There's not been a lot of continuity in those films. Different women, different same, Bonds. Like a lot of the same characters. Similar shoes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Things um, will happen that are Bondy. And I think Bondy. you go. I think you just do that. I think you go back to that tradition <laughs> like of that. Bond. Um, because with Pierce Brosnan's Bond, we didn't have an origin story. We just he's the new Bond. Yeah, in a yeah. Way exactly. Went. And I think you do the same thing. And I'm going to throw out a name to you guys. Well, uh, who I could see ultimately. Uh, taking over the mantle of Bond. This is mm. big. I like it. Liam Hemsworth. Ooh. I actually think you give him five, six, seven, eight more years. Liam Hemsworth. Really? Um, I think Liam you Hemsworth. You want four, don't of you? Course, I want Thor, four. Thor, <laughs> brother, um, I, I Well, of course, his big brother, Chris Hemsworth, is taking over another super yeah. spy franchise yeah. with the American Assassin series. But I actually think Liam Hemsworth I think he's got it. I, I really do. Give him five to ten more out years. Out of him to determine yeah, that. Yeah, neither. But have in I. terms of his, like, you know, physique and look. look and like 
you know, I want to see if he can actually do some action. Yeah, but we're talking about five to ten years down the line because Daniel Craig has three more Bond films after this. Because the thing I love so much about Daniel Craig is that he's believable as an action star and as a womanizer. Yeah. So you you really love both sides. You know, Pierce Bronson, Mm -hmm. I didn't really believe he was badass. I believed that he's a charmer. But that's been true. I want both. That's been true of just about every Bond, right? They've either been. Pierce, but he's no Daniel Craig. I think Daniel Craig's the best Bond. I agree. The funny thing about Pierce is that he's probably less of a womanizer. Actually, but yeah, like but he totally. played. But you he was a charmer. I didn't believe him as a badass. You have two bonds, much like Batman. You have the the Bruce Wayne side. You have yeah. Batman side. Bond. There's always been two sides. There's exactly. been the suave Bond, the mm-hmm. womanizing, you know, martini shaken, not stir Bond, yes. and then you've got the and badass. Now beer, apparently. So you got your Sean Connery Bonds, and you got your Roger Moore Bonds, and I think Daniel Craig has is the first he's Bond he's to truly the, be exactly, both. Exactly. That's he, what I love about yeah, it. Yeah, he bridges the bonds. He does. Yeah, he really does. Bridges but I, 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 to counter your point, I got to forget before I forget this there is this brilliant speaking of sean connery as bond there's this brilliant 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 uh family guy clip where you know how they do cutaways in family yeah, guy yes. this is more of this than this and they cut to something random well they cut to this random thing of sean connery dressed as bond and he's in this hotel room with this beautiful woman and whoever the voice actor is does a great sean connery and it's like you and I are going to have sex. And she says... Um, that sounded like Bane. And, but then she goes... Um, this is going to be says, so synchronistic. No. And he goes, yes. She, okay. and, like, and he pulls her in tighter. She goes, no. And he's like, yes. yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. I've okay, yes. And then he turns to the camera and goes, remember, gentlemen, 17 no's and one yes means yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. I, That's so I, this is going to be amazingly synchronistic. A, I love Family Guy. Moving on from that. This is the argument that I would make. Two things. One, to reboot it, I think makes no sense. They had no to sense. refresh it because they saw when, with the Pierce, the final attempt at being the old Bond and staying, remaining in yeah, sort of the style that reset. they had established in the 80s point, and 90s. It just didn't tap. work anymore. They rebooted it and they created a new tone that worked in a contemporary world. I think it was brilliant. Yes, Daniel Craig bridges the bonds. But bridges the bonds. However, I would love to see a return to a more Sean Connery esque Bond. And here is my name that I'm going to throw out. And by that I mean Ooh. big, powerful, gruff, manly Bond, really rough and tumble Bond, Tom Hardy. And if you don't think that he can do it because all you've seen him in is Warrior and As Bane and so forth, no. check him out he once again it. in Inception and think of that guy as a new Bond. I'm. I think I, I, I still pick Liam Hemsworth, but I like your pick. Yeah, I, I like the Hardy idea of a good. Tom Hardy as a Bond. I I like the pick. I yeah. do. Mm. I think it's a nice pick. What about uh, you, Amy Rose? Who would you uh, throw in there? Oh man, I mean, it's hard because I love Daniel Craig so much as that role. I'll have to think about that. I mean, he's got to be good looking. The accent always does it for me, mm-hmm. so that's <laughs> a good one. And on a different note of villains, I'm so excited for Javier Bardem. Yeah. He's oh yeah, the man. Oh yeah, and so scary. In and the dyed blonde hair. I mean, yeah. I, we, we've always talked. We talked about that. I'll before. get back to you on that one, though. All right, let's move on to the next uh, next item here. All right, last one. This is from DJ. Got two questions. Hey guys, just want to say I think you guys are awesome, and I love the show. In the past weeks or so, Fox has named Mike Miller uh, to do a Joss Whedon like job and consult over Fox's Marvel Cinematic franchises, X Men and Fantastic Four. So my questions are, do you think this will work out the same way that Marvel did for their movie universe? Do you want me to read both? Yeah, I read both. Do you ever, number two, do you ever think there will be a day where all of these Marvel superhero movies, Avengers, Spider-Man, X-Men, Fantastic Four, etc., will be in one movie complete universe? And if so, if you were in charge, how would you set it up and what would it be like? That would be a lot of people in one movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I do think, it's, uh, going to the first question, I do think... Fox has the idea to do what Marvel has done and create one cohesive universe yes. for their superhero characters. Uh, so that means the X-Men universe, which is pretty big already. Yes, and with, pretty awesome. With the upcoming Fantastic Four universe. And I, I'm sure, I know they have another couple of characters, but I just can't think of who they have the rights to right now. They no longer have Daredevil. I know that. Um, I don't think so, anybody's crying. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, no, I, I still I wanna, think I a good Daredevil a good, movie would be pretty cool. I wanted to see a good Joe Carnahan yeah, Dar- that would have been pretty interesting. Now, that being said, um, so yeah, I do see it working. I think that's what Marvel is aiming for. Now, whether or not it works out, I think it has its chances to work out. Yeah. I really do. Let's mm-hmm. give it the benefit of the doubt for now. Regarding the second half of the question, do we ever see a day where we can see all these? Uh, m- no. No. 
<laughs> it's just not going to happen. Uh, so that would require Sony and Fox and Marvel, which includes Disney, yeah. to all get together and make one big happy movie. And y- you may think, well, it's going to make a billion dollars. There's Doesn't not matter. enough no. to go around to how much each one of those guys. Yeah. Each of them would want 70% of the pie. Yeah, yeah. not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It, I, and I, there's so I many arguments to be made. Like, this one has more characters, but this one has more valuable characters. Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. You know, Disney at this point is like, I don't need you. you yeah. know? I, Sony's I, not going to let Spider-Man know, like, go. It's like, like, it's yeah. without a fight. I mean, yeah, it'd be really, we were, really hard. You raise a great point. If we were in a situation where, like, you know, the popularity of the Avengers just wasn't what we were hoping it was going to be. Right. Maybe Maybe if we broker a deal to get Spider-Man in there. Right. Maybe if we give, you know, three hundred million dollars to Sony, we can get a temporary license to have Spider-Man in one of our Avengers to give. Them. You just you said it perfectly. Disney doesn't need them. No, yeah. they don't. Marvel does not need no. anybody. They don't nope. need Spider-Man no. to be there, and they know it. They don't need the Fantastic yeah. Four to be there, and they know it. It's the other properties yeah. that need them. Exactly. And that's the irony. And, that's and I think if, you, if you see Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant-Man be a success, Marvel is going to triply be like, I really don't need you. Because yeah. I can throw out some crazy business that no one's ever heard of, still going to make a yeah. billion. To your five. <laughs> like, like, it's to your happen. five. Yeah, to whatever you are making. With Phase five. Jockstrap man. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll work. And, and it'll it will work. work. It will always work. We'll still go see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it's a great question. It's brought up a lot to everything we can see Spider-Man and the Avengers and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? It, it, it's a two-pronged problem. Marvel don't need them. Yeah. Sony won't want to give up no. the yeah. rights to them. Uh, Fox won't want to give up the rights to X-Men. X-Men. Yeah. Uh, unless Fantastic unless Four. the next Wolverine tanks. completely tanks. It's not yeah. But let's face it, even if it's, if it's a bad movie and we all think it looks pretty good, yeah. even if it's a bad movie, it ain't gonna tank. No. Have you it's, seen the artwork? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did the Wolverine do? I don't remember. It made money. Yeah. It made money. They it made money. Even I mean, though it was a bad it was film, it made money. Yeah. And so as long as they're making money, they're not going to give up those rights. Um, it And Fantastic Four, maybe, but they've already invested in doing another Fantastic Four film. You know they want to franchise it. And, and they know, need to. They and they need want to, do to bring it into the larger yeah. Marvel world in Fox Universe right. with the X-Men. So There's the Ant-Man yeah, connection, I just too, don't, with I Fantastic just don't Four. think it'll ever happen. I think yeah. I should be the next Invisible Woman, just saying. <laughs> you should be the next Invisible <laughs> yes. Woman. You look like a Supergirl to me. I know. Well, I the chat see, board said Wonder DC. Woman, but then I'd I have to dye my hair. But if you want to play, I'm saying if you want to play a comic book character, you look like a Supergirl to me. Also, oh, Miss Marvel. <laughs> or Miss Marvel. Marvel. Miss Marvel. Yeah. If you want to be in the Marvel, Marvel world, yeah. you could be a Miss Marvel. All right, you hear We're putting that, that, that in the universe now. You would Marvel. have to you hear wear that? very little. shouting it. I'm putting yes. it out there. <laughs> <laughs> secret. I'm putting it out in the universe. Put, yeah, exactly. Very, very Do the little. secret. But well, you would have to be comfortable being incredibly exposed in your bodily wares. Oh. But how it goes. I think it would be rocky. <laughs> well, listen. We have, uh, we've actually gone over time. It is time for us to wrap this thing up. Once again, I want to remind you guys. Stop what you're doing. Jump on over, click the button that you see, and subscribe to our AMC Theaters YouTube channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with all the movie news that we have going up on YouTube, as well as our editorials and, of course, the AMC Movie Talk Show. Visit us over on our website at amctheaters.com slash movie-news, which you can see the link to that below. Uh, Join us for all this wonderful stuff. Go buy your tickets for a movie this weekend by going to amctheaters.com. And once again, don't forget, we do have that special coming on, two-for-one tickets for seeing Seven Psychopaths this coming Saturday. Do it. it. Do it. Absolutely, I will do, do it. it. <laughs> so then I'm left out. <laughs> Everybody, I will buy one, get people. two free. Let's do this. Somebody so want to buy me tickets? I want to, uh, as always, I want to thank Roth Cornett. Thank you. Amy Rose Eisenbach. Thank you very much. Candon Bliss Jackson. Thank you. And of course, still filling in for the uh, in Taiwan, Dennis Zen, Mr. Kareem. Thanks so much <laughs> for filling in, doing all the stuff behind the board. And thank you for joining us. Don't forget to join us next time. Send us your comments and questions. We can't wait to hear them. Until next time, my name's John Campia. Bye-bye.